Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Seamus Hoyne, and I'm the, the coordinator of the CERV project for those that I haven't met yet. I think I've met a lot of people in the room during the week, although I'm getting a bit bleary eyed at this stage after the week. So, um, so thank you very much for coming. Um, we have a, a busy schedule for the day. Um, before we start, as the priest says in Mass, will you please turn off your mobile phones? Um, or put them on silent. Um, in terms of health and safety, fire exits from, from the room are here on my right, and the, the door that you, that you came in. This door brings you, if you carry straight out to your right, the fire exits are at the, at the front uh, through reception. Um, so we're here to, to talk about, I suppose, impacts of the CERV project and then to build on some of the themes towards issues that have emerged, we feel, in terms of moving uh, sustainable energy projects forward from uh, a community and a regional level point of view. But a lot of the issues apply both at um, non-community based projects as well. Um, so I'm going to start and provide a kind of a, an overview of, of the CERV project for, for everybody. Um, and I've tried to keep it non-technical. I've tried to keep it focused on words and pictures, um, or some numbers and pictures, rather than huge amount of detail of um, the technical aspects behind the CERV project. We've talked a lot about those over the last few days and we've, we've gone to see some of the projects. So I suppose in the beginning we were five years younger. Um, this was the first partners meeting held in the civic offices. Um, we had people, some additional people, so I obviously had a lot more here as coordinator before I started. Um, some people were there at the start of the project and have, have moved on to, to other jobs, uh, different work. So uh, where we are now is certainly different to where we were at, at the start. What the project was about was really an integrated approach driven by a, a vision from the Commission and Europe looking at creating communities that demonstrated energy efficiency and renewable energy uh, in specific communities, but also looked at monitoring the impact both from an energy efficiency point of view, an economic point of view, looking at social impacts, providing training, doing research. So a complex integrated project that presented lots of challenges over a, a long period. We created this region um, within North Tipperary where we were going to apply these uh, actions and this region grew out of uh, the concept of using the Eco Village in Clock Jordan as uh, a centre point and having a ripple effect toward out within a region in, in North Tipperary. We had lots of people involved, the local authority, the Eco Village, assessors, contractors, building owners, the energy agency, SEAI, um, and without them all working together, CERV was not going to work. They all had their different roles and responsibilities uh, in terms of the different actions. Um, different actions were led by different partners. Um, from a technical and a budgetary and uh, an implementation point of view. So some of the, the results in terms of numbers. Um, we've retrofitted nearly 400 buildings. We have 50 new eco buildings in the eco village. About 63,000 square meters of buildings either retrofitted or, or constructed uh, in the period. And this was done in the, the worst economic crisis that we've seen so uh, and we've done it on time and on budget which has been a significant achievement. We've had 10 partners meetings. I've been to Brussels at least 10 times for meeting with the Commission. I estimate at this stage we've written 5,000 pages of reports for the Commission sitting on shelves in the Commission or on the websites or wherever they are. Um, 
And the first years of reports, the main criticism we got back was that the reports weren't bound properly. <laughs> so we, we've, learned, we've grown and learned how to bind reports through the project as well. We have nearly 600 wood stoves installed, close to 1,000 square meters of solar panels, two megawatts of biomass in the serve region alone um, at, at commercial scale. Um, and one of those is sitting across from the hotel here in the municipal pool, saving approximately 25,000 euros for the town council every year in terms of energy costs. So these are real projects, real energy savings for, for businesses, for local authorities and for homes. I think I said yesterday we had four million pieces of energy data. I actually redid my calculations last night and it's actually 20 million pieces of energy data. So that's a lot of information about what type of, what way people use their television, how to heat their homes, how to use their washing machines, uh, energy performance of their buildings versus DEP, um, social impacts, the capital cost of their investments, the amount of grant aid they got. So we have a huge resource that we can build on in terms of research into the future. Thousands, hundreds of house visits by us, by contractors, by BER assessors, and many, many cups of tea. I think Michael Bell, who some of you will see talking later, probably drank 50% of the cups of tea as he was going around talking to all of the, the homeowners in terms of energy um, analysis. <coughs> We've drawn down nearly four million euros of grant aid and invested that, the majority of that, in this small region in North Tipperary. We have shown and calculated that there's an 11% return on your investment for retrofitting your home. And we've shown a 13% increase in use of biomass in the region, displacing other solid fuels and oil. We've written, oh, apologies, this man is upside down. 20 different case studies looking at homeowners, contractors, local authorities, eco-village members. Um, we've done thousands of hours of promotion of sustainable energy, investing um, through information evenings, uh, press releases, community meetings, uh, conferences, training sessions. We've hosted approximately 30 site visits from a whole range of people from across uh, Europe, We've, uh, and within Ireland. The project has been presented in France, Austria, Greece, um, Brussels, many times, Canada, America, Spain, UK, and this year, we even got to China. Uh, so a lot of people know about the project and its success. And I suppose really to paint a picture of what things were like in 2007 um, in the energy sector. There was no system for energy rating of buildings. There was no buildings in the eco-village. There was no supports for retrofitting of homes. There was no standards for installation of wood stoves. There was no training on retrofitting. No quality assurance system for retrofitting. No biomass district heating in the country. No data really on real energy data on energy performance of buildings. And no heat supply contracts in place. So it was a very different world in terms of uh, what we were planning. We have, I suppose this graphically represents some of the numbers I've talked about in terms of the, the installations, showing where they're, they're spread across. We've um, nearly doubled our energy savings, driven by the success of our implementation, but also by the fact that the buildings were actually a hell of a lot worse than we expected in terms of their energy performance and we will have significantly increased the amount of renewable energy that we targeted to produce. 
I suppose this graph really shows the impact of serve. Really the, the two lines to look at is, are the blue line, which is the residential buildings before uh, serve. So their energy performance based on a, a building energy rating. So you can see the majority of them were out towards the DE and a, a large 20% in the F and G range. Now we have practically all of our houses within the, the C1. C2 range. So a huge difference in terms of energy performance. And these are our houses from the Eco Village showing that the majority of them are in the A1, uh, A3, B1 range. So the building regulations have now caught up to the Eco Village um, in terms of performance. We talked in detail over the last few days about energy monitoring, but we, we have put in energy monitoring into 100 homes using sophisticated systems developed and installed by an Irish company, sending back data to databases here, which we're using for energy analysis now. Um, the first time this was done at this scale in Ireland. So now, of course that should be this was done at 2 o'clock last night, folks, so any typos are as a result of same. Um, we now have uh, one of the best systems for billing energy rating in, in Ireland, and CERB was involved in piloting the, the DEP system, and also LIT has been involved in training about 200 energy assessors. We now have 8,000 square meters of buildings in the Eco Village with people living in them, connected to a district heating system with very good energy performance. We have a natural retrofit program that has emerged um, and grant supports that have, we've had lots of engagement at SEAI and many similarities of what we, we dreamt about back in 2005, 2006. Um, through the work that we did on wood stoves, the, the, con the standards and requirements in terms of wood stoves have now been uh, provided to SEAI and they've built some of that into their guidelines for the dwelling energy assessment procedure. We've trained just within the serve region about 200 people on quality standards for retrofitting and there are lots of now training and information sessions on retrofitting across um, the country. We we're involved again working with SEI in terms of quality assurance of building energy rating assessors and we ourselves have audited about uh, 100 buildings and contractors. We now have two operating successful biomass district heating systems in, in the country and we had a really good discussion yesterday about how to move district heating forward based on analysis that we're doing for district heating for, for NINA. And we have all of this data. And because of CERV, we have heat supply contracts installed, not just within the CERV region, but uh, in other biomass plants uh, within County Tipperary. So some pictures just to take you through for those that haven't been on the site visits or haven't seen buildings. Most of these are buildings from the Eco Village. Uh, pictures of retrofitting are not so as interesting, so I've used most of them from the Eco Village. So we have an Eco Hostel, we have buildings constructed with hemp lime, um, demonstrated new building techniques, new to Ireland. We have passive house designs connected to district heating systems, a lot of innovative timber frame construction systems. We have cob buildings, um, so re reusing old systems and technologies and uh, constructing buildings in a, an eco-village setting. We've used Duracell blocks, new building materials, which are very well suited. We've done lots and lots of BERs measured thousands of square meters. We have biomass district heating at the Eco Village with uh, a range of technologies across the, the region. This is the plant across the road in the, the biomass plant in the pool. Lots of wood stoves um, which have made a huge impact in terms of energy performance of buildings lots of mo monitoring and control systems installed. 
lots of metering, uh, trying to figure out how to install monitoring systems in these buildings, <coughs> teaching people how to use control systems in buildings for domestic hot water, trying to figure out sophisticated boiler management systems, looking at all of this data and trying to map the trends, monitoring wind speeds to see if we can develop wind energy as a supply option in the eco-village, hosting government ministers um, at various site visits, people visiting from France, regions in France, celebrities and dogs. Um, Gortin Agricultural College as a prime example of how to develop sustainable energy supply within a specific site and set targets, visiting academic institutions, discussions with architects and builders, and lots of conferences as, as we come to today. And also visitations from, um, from Spain. This is a site, I, and I kept this site, this picture. This is a site we visited in our observer community in Spain. And I feel like taking every plumber in Ireland into that plant room. Uh, it is one of the best plant rooms I have ever seen in terms of installation. If we could get that standard within Ireland, it would be fantastic. And we also had the mayor of Michael isn't here, so I knew I could put this up. The Mayor of North Tipperary County Council learning how to pour cider in the Spanish fashion. And we have a new project on how to exchange technical knowledge on cider production between Spain and Ireland. So I suppose that picture was to show that behind all the thousands of pages, all of the work, all of the long nights, the stressful meetings, we've had a lot of fun with people and with the partners. And these two kids are famous around the world now. Um, they're probably going to come back looking for royalties off me at some stage. But really, I, 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 I've said this to many people at this stage. These are two children in the eco-village. And their reality is sustainable energy. Their heat comes from biomass. They walk to school. They get most of their food within 25 kilometers of where they live. Um, they live beside a solar panel, they grow a lot of their own food. Um, so their reality is what we need to make everybody's reality in terms of sustainable energy. Um, and I think the CERV project has been one step towards achieving that. So hopefully that's uh, whet your appetite. We really do want to get discussion question and answers throughout the day. Um, what we're moving on to now is some other projects which I suppose reflect some of the, the ethos behind the development of community energy projects. Um, and to really give you just your appetite of some of the challenges that these uh, groups are facing and how they've got around and the, the things that they're doing. Um, so we'll, we'll take those next three Present, sorry, apologies. We're, we're going to have, a, before that, a presentation from Concerto Premium, which will give you a sense of um, the scale of activity that's going on across Europe in terms of other Concerto projects. So CERV is not unique in its own. There are lots of other communities at urban and rural scale looking at integrated energy supply systems and sustainable development. <laughs>